This right here is the BR-75 service rifle used by the UNSC, uh, which is the United Nations Space Command. This is manufactured by the Misra Armory in the EOS Chasma, which is actually a territory on Mars. This is a bullpup configured rifle. Basically, that means that the action and magazine are located behind the trigger and grip. Featuring a 16 inch barrel, this bullpup comes in at an overall length of 28.25 inches, making this extremely compact. This bullpup is 100% ambidextrous, even featuring a reversible case ejection system. No, this is not the BR-75 service rifle, that's from a video game. This is a Croatian battle rifle known as the VHS-2 and has been imported and redesigned known as the Hellion. imported from Springfield Armory as the Hellion. Helion. Helium. Hellion. When I first saw pictures of it, I fell in love with it, but I kind of wanted to not like it from all the stuff that I heard. So there's a lot of YouTube reviewers out there and Gun Channel's uh, blog writer reviewed this and found lots of problems. Now, for the most part, I can almost agree with every single problem on this, but it does have some really cool features that actually redeem it. One negative is a price tag. $2,000 is quite a lot for a rifle that doesn't really have a whole lot of frills. Now, it's cool and it's comfortable to shoot, but $2,000 is quite a big chunk to chew off. So let's go through some of the features. I also wanna to talk to you guys about some of the negatives about this rifle and then some of the positives too, and maybe some things that we might have not taken into consideration. Before we do, I wanna give some thanks to Tactical Considerations. Uh, Mike, he let me borrow this for a review. I also really wanna thank True Shot Gun Club. They were pretty much the sole ammo sponsor for this video, so I was able to do some ammo testing with lots of different types of ammo. So let's talk about it. So this is essentially the imported version of the Croatian VHS-2. Um, VH2 is an acronym that I don't actually know what it stands for. It just is what it is. There's a lot of cool features on this. You can see it is a bullpup. So bullpup, essentially your fire control group, everything is up here. That's where your grip and trigger are. And then you have your magazine well right back here. One big complaint about the Hellion, not only from other people, but from me as well, is the trigger just generally sucks on it. And what I mean by that is it's a very squishy, muddy, and slow trigger. So I'm gonna show you guys, obviously it is clear, there's no magazine in it. This is all take up right there. And then you hit that first wall and it creeps, it creeps, it creeps, it creeps, it creeps, it gets stiffer and then it breaks. The reset, here's your reset right here. Boom, right there and then you still have some take up. So you gotta go, it kind of bounces you out of reset, a little more take up. So one way to think about it is an AR-15, something like that, the trigger is almost like, think about doing a belly flop on a concrete floor, okay? You're just jumping, boom, you smack the floor. Instant break, typically. Now with this guy, it is a bull pup. It's a very mushy trigger, so it's kind of like doing a belly flop on a pile of blankets. Eventually, it's gonna be hard under those blankets, but before it's hard, you get this a little mushiness, something to soften the blow. That's kind of like the trigger pull. It doesn't, it's not very predictable. It doesn't quite break where you would expect it to break. That being said, with a bull pop, one thing you might not realize is basically your hammer, everything, hammer, sear, all that stuff is all back here and your trigger's up here. So instead of an AR-15, everything on that trigger pack is all located next to each other. The difference with the bullpup is everything up here, since your trigger is forward, everything needs to be extended back here. That's gonna cause parts to stretch, bend, all that. 
So unfortunately, bullpups are kind of notoriously known for having shitty triggers. The trigger is not bad. It's a slow trigger. It's very hard to rapid fire this thing um, like you would an AR-15, but it's a very soft shooter. Um, extremely soft shooter, to be, in fact. So let's talk about some stock features. You do have a stock with fixed position. It's spring-loaded too, so as soon as you pull this guy, it kind of bumps it forward. You do have an adjustable cheek weld right here, which just pulls up. It gives you a little cheek riser if needed. You insert the magazine right there. And then to release the bolt, which is one of my first complaints, right here, right here on the back, this is the bolt release right here. Pinch these, and then it sends that bolt home. This is not a reciprocating charging handle. I have a steel target set up about 100 yards downrange. That safety is just weird. It just doesn't really work with the, uh, the, the location of the magazine. Your wrist kind of pops into the mag when you engage the safety. Hit. Okay, so the trigger's a little strange, but for a bullpup, it actually feels pretty good. This gun is a soft shooter. There is almost no recoil. Um, doesn't take much to get back on target. Again, I'm at 100 yards right now, and it seemed to be plinking my steel silhouette pretty much dead center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple different types of ammo tests on this right now. So next we have 10 rounds. This is the Tula. This is the Red Army 223. Hit, hit, all right, let me go fast now. PMC bronze. Hit, hit. The PMC 556 X-TAC. Hit. Hit. All right, mag dump. Last time we're gonna to test today is 556 green tip. This stuff I believe is Norma. Hate that safety. Well, it seems to work just fine. Okay, that's weird. I will say that. Let me do some rapid fire just to get a feel. That bolt release is different. Yeah. It really is. All right, let's try out this. So the wind is carrying me. <laughs> no. The, the rifle itself is great. It's really compact. I can get right in there, get a good forward grip on it, get right on target. The trigger reset is a little far out, which if you can see with the rapid fire, you can see that it's the reset, you're trying to find it. Other than that, this is a well-built rifle. It just sits flat, shoots flat. It's back heavy like a bullpup should. 
but it gives you just, it's just really, just a stable platform if the wind wouldn't knock me over, but it's just a stable platform all around. Safety selector, up and down, like, I get it. It is, it is intuitive to get that up. It's just different from what I'm used to. The grip feels great. The mag release, good. H&K style. Yeah, H&K. H and K pull down style. The bolt release is just a little different, but no, this is a a great product that they put out. I'm glad to see that they're importing this into the country now. Completely, extremely ambidextrous. So even the charging handle right here, you can be a left-handed charging handle or a right-handed charging handle. The safety, which is the next gripe is right here. That's also ambidextrous. The safety feels downright backwards on this guy. So um, the, the paddles are kind of like inverted and then the safety is very stiff. When I was shooting it, one thing that I did notice is I kept getting the safeties wrong. I don't know why. Um, anyways, everybody complains about the safety and as well they should. This is a 5.56 chambered firearm. So it can fire two two threes or 5.56 by 45. Right on the tip, you have an adjustable gas block. So you push it in and you can set it to suppress mode. Or of, or of course you could push that in and then rotate it back and you can go to normal mode. So a two position gas setting, which is really nice. You can optimize this for suppressed fire or you can just set it to normal. Since this is not my rifle, I didn't want to take the night force scope off of it for testing. I don't want them to have to re-zero uh, the scope or anything. So I didn't test out the irons, but they look like they're pretty good quality. You push this button right here for the irons and they flip right up. And then you have the same thing for the rear as well. So what we talked about was the ambidextrous charging handle, ambidextrous safety, um, your ejection ports can be reversed. So ambidextrous ejection ports. Let's talk about another weird thing and that's gonna be the bolt hold open situation. It'll only hold itself open on an empty magazine. Or if you stick your finger in this hole right here and then you pull it back, you can find a little tab that the magazine engages with and then you have a bolt hold open. So it kind of sucks, you know, not having an external button to hold that bolt. That's okay. Um, right back here, this is where you release your bolt. You pinch this guy right in the back and then it sends your bolt home or you can slingshot it with a charging handle too. So is the Hellion worth $2,000? Now I would say for me, no, I probably wouldn't pay two grand for this. Not that I don't think it's worth it. It's actually a pretty cool rifle um, once you get by all the uh, quirks that I don't necessarily care for. I think this is a very capable battle rifle, to be honest. I think this is well built and out of the few hundred rounds that I fired with True Shot Gun Club, again, shout out True Shot Gun Club, thanks for the ammo for testing. It's been performing. It didn't have a single failure whatsoever. We use several different types of magazines and we use several different types of ammo with it and everything, it just worked, it ate it. I might complain about the funky little bolt release right here, but the fact of the matter is a lot of several, there's a lot of bull pups out there that don't even have a bolt release. A lot of them don't hold open on last round. So you're literally just reloading and re-chambering. So it's cool that they even offer an option to release that bolt. The trigger, like I said, is muddy, but for a bull pup, it's not all that bad. You can't rapid fire it. Now you can try to shoot it quick, it just won't go quick. And that's because of all the travel on that trigger. So there is something refreshing about this. And that's the fact that it's not just another AR. Now, don't get me wrong, I love ARs and I have quite a few of them. In the end, they all function relatively similar. You might have some that are better quality than others. You might have um, some that have different features than others, but in general, an AR will act like an AR. Um, this doesn't, it feels different. It, obviously it wields different, it just shoots different. It has a totally different recoil feel. And I will say this is one of the softest shooting rifles I've ever fired. And I mean soft. That's it guys. Hope you all like this video. Thank you again, True Shot Gun Club. Thank you again, Tactical Considerations. I'll see you guys.